Well, hello there. Hi, I'm Jamie. This is Dead Dodge Garage. And this is a 1974 Dodge Dart Sport. It's beige, like aggressively beige, and slightly brown. It's also very, very solid. Like, maybe the most solid A-body I've ever seen. And that's including my demon. According to the weather report, rain is gonna happen in the next couple hours. Kinda wanna get that dart sport out of the elements because it's from California and it might melt. Last licensed, 2006. Bob Dylan sticker. That's a new one. Beak nose. Some people really don't like those. I kinda do, but I can't say it's my favorite. The first Mopar I owned that was drivable was a 74 Duster. It had had a top just like this removed to reveal horrible rust holes right in this area. We're not going to find that on this car, or anything else. Yep, it's an A-body from the 70s. Needs some attention in here. That's not so bad. The odometer says 30, 829. But is it 130 or 230? I don't know. It was pretty obviously well used for many years. The carpet's been replaced. Of course, it's got an 80s-tastic aftermarket radio. All of this ignition switch wiring has been cut out, repaired, and then bypassed. Issues there are very common. Being a 74, it's got the later two-row fuse panel. Not the single-row black unit I'm used to seeing. The back seat is green, but only because the original definitely crumbled in the California sun. Also, admire that, like, comforter that's in the back window. I think someone has upholstered the original cardboard headliner. It's kind of nice. Kind of. Yeah, someone must have found a green parts car somewhere. Interesting. Look at how much extra space there is between the quarter panel and the factory wheel and tire combination. <sighs> yeah. Chrysler. This thing's got some dents and scrapes and bruises and such, but it's mostly original paint, actually. Except for that door. I'm getting pretty serious flashbacks to my 73 Swinger. It was roughly the same color, and that door had also been repainted on that car. Let's look under the hood. Oh, come on. How many of these have I owned? Jeez. Whoa. Extra engine compartment lock. That's interesting. Yep. It's a Slant 6. 225 Slant 6. The official engine of sounding like a broken tractor and being very slow. This is the earlier engine, which still has spark plug tubes, and the distributor hold down that's attached to the distributor body, which I'll just tell you now is a humongous pain. It has this incredible and ridiculous performance Voltmaster coil from Mallory. Definitely unnecessary. The last guy did me a favor and put a date on the oil filter. August of 2006. So I guess the sticker's right. But will it run? Oh, come on. I need more hands. Anyway, yeah, the crank turns, and it's a slant six, so it'll definitely run. Mm-hmm. It might not run for long, but uh, that's okay. The slant six isn't going to be running for long in here anyway. More on that in a minute. <clears throat> mm-hmm. The stance really leaves something to be desired, too. More on that later as well. You know, the Dart Sport is basically the 73 and newer Demon. They stopped using that name and decided to make the cars way uglier. Okay, I actually kind of like the square lights. I used to have one of these. A blue, mostly primer, 73. It was kind of a cool car. Slant 6, 3-speed on the floor. I've been advised that there's a battery in the trunk. Oh, there's all kinds of treasures, actually. Ooh. We might need this. Oh, man. Decal's lifting. It's really, really nice, though. And this is interesting. All the spare parts back here have the VIN of the car they were removed from. Because California, I guess? This is not an original air conditioning car, but there are air conditioning system hoses in here. And old shocks. And the old water pump. As well as the spare air cleaner. Neat. Also a really fancy transmission mount setup. Yeah, we'll worry about that later too. There's so much metal in here. It's just crazy. There's a starter in the trunk, which appears to be slightly broken. There's an entire box of PB Blaster, 
and some brake clean. Did you know that this ridge was added to the trunk lid on later dusters and Dodge cars based on the duster body? That's because on the original trunk lids without the ridge, they dented really easily. New resistor, that's always a good sign. All right, let's see what we get. We get a dome light. You know, I think this is gonna go too well. Hmm, okay. Yes. Where's the antenna? Hmm. Yes. No dash lights, but usually playing with the dash dimmer switch thingy will eventually bring them back. Really? With the annoying sounds. And the radio works. What? Awesome. Oh. Do you hear what I hear? Oh, I'm gonna fix that really quickly. That sure sounded like a lack of compression on one cylinder, which is unfortunate because, well, this slant is gonna be available soon and I kinda need one that has six working cylinders for reasons. <coughs> reasons. Huh, didn't think I had any gasoline, but apparently I do. I wonder what we're gonna find under here. Oh good, it's not a 1920. This is a Holly 1945. 1948? I don't remember. Whatever it is, it's not a 1920, and that's the best news I've heard all day. Confidence looks like this. Fine. Be that way. Some of that's even going in the bowl vent. I gotta watch my elbow on this washer tank. I always break those. Always. It's a really good chance we're missing crank power. Mm. Let's try some choke. Stubborn. It's a little too much timing. And that would be because someone moved the distributor to the maximum hot rod position, which is full counterclockwise. Needs to be in like the middle of the slot, maybe. Oh, wow. It's definitely gonna be low on fluid. Just notice this. There's no coolant because there's no block drain. They pulled the plug, let it dribble, and left it that way for years. I don't really understand that technique. Personally, I'd like to just leave antifreeze in it. It would be better protected from corrosion that way, I think. But this is not the first time I've seen this. The 34 Plymouth I revived some time ago also had the drain plug removed and the radiator drain open. Uh-huh, not only is this one open, it's got a hose attached to it. Thing is, I don't wanna put coolant in this thing because I'm just gonna have to drain it right back out. So, um, we'll just run it anyway. Yeah, there's no ignition too. Sometimes there's an ignition too. I don't get it. Come on, you can do it. Oh, battery's dying. It's way too much timing. This thing's really thirsty. Oh, that's where my other good battery went. And gas can. And the one working clicky clack pump. Whoops. I guess we won't be saving that one. Bye bye. I'll come off it now. Sometime this year. Yep. Yep. Oh, don't do that. Stay. You know, one of the great things about the Slant 6 design is all the room they left for an auxiliary fuel system. Okay. That sounds promising. Mm -hmm. Just a little 
smoke? Yeah. Uh, I think I found where the compression went. Crankcase freezer. That's really entertaining. Why won't it run though? I just need this thing inside. Let's see if it'll do that for me. Slightly flooded. Slightly. Oh, neat. Huh. I should probably back the timing off. All right, it moves. Nice. Not for long, but it does move. Power steering works. <laughs> okay. Speaking of things working, not a chance. My normal move is to just dump brake fluid in the master and start pumping for like half an hour. But same as the coolant situation, I'm just gonna remove the brakes anyway, so I don't really wanna do that. Step one to adjusting the timing on your slant six. This guy, 716 socket, 90 foot long extension, does the trick. Let's go there, yeah. Really? Well, that's entertaining. Still acting like too much timing, but also not enough timing. You know what that means? Well, it means the firing order could be wrong, but in this case it's not. So maybe it's way too much timing and a bad intake valve too. Ugh. So violent. So gutless. <laughs> Oh, so much smoke. Let's see if it'll move. Oh yeah, no brakes, I forgot. Nice. This is terrible, but it is moving. I'm completely blind. Oh yeah. Keep those breather vapors straight in the car. Works great. Oh, it's pretty much good as new now. I'm not so sure about all the sounds and things. Doesn't have to make it far. Uh, oh, the wipers work. Neat. I still can't see, but it's nice. Ugh. This isn't ideal, really. I mean, we're close. Also, it's buzzing again. I've only just noticed this. Um, you know, they might've known something was up.
you know, except for that. That's not so good. Now, just so we're all clear, it didn't get hot. There's a little temperature in the exhaust, but that's about it. That is an unhappy slant six. You're not supposed to sound like that. cool. Oh yeah, buddy. That's a sad slant six. And my little fuel pump. Also a sick puppy, which is really unfortunate. So, bad news. Not a good turbo motor candidate. Good news. I have all of the parts to fix everything wrong with this car in the building right now. So let's talk about that. This 1974 Dodge Dart Sport belongs to Dylan a subscriber who found me on YouTube and said, hey, would you like to build my 1974 Dodge Dart Sport? Well, sure, I'd love to do that. You know, for money and stuff. This car was previously Dylan's uncle's. It's been in the family for some time. Let's just say the price was right. As you may know, I love a good slant six, but not everyone feels this way. And clearly this isn't a good slant six. Dylan had some ideas though. He'd like a quick little daily drivable car. Something that's fun. Something that might embarrass an import here or there. Something that'll go around corners and carve the canyons in California. So, he took the savings from the great deal on the car and rolled all of that, and a whole bunch more, into this giant pile of parts. The crown jewel amongst which, this 408 stroker engine on a crate. Now I've shown this engine on video before, in fact, I've also kind of teased this project. Basically, it's a crate Magnum-based 408 engine. Shiny aluminum heads from Edelbrock, roller cam, of course. There are all kinds of goodies in this thing. Ooh, shiny. I just so happen to have an almost matching air cleaner that's going on it as well. You'll notice there are some boxes that say Hotchkiss Sport Suspension. A couple big boxes that say TTI Performance Exhaust. Some leaf springs that almost broke my wife's toe. And a box that says Silver Sport Transmissions Tremac on it. Now we can't forget the wheels and tires. They're here too. Torsion bars. Mm-hmm. And still, the pile goes deeper. Dylan was considering going EFI on this build. I talked him out of it. So instead we have this QFT Holly type carburetor. Neat. You'll notice it's a vacuum secondary. That's because this is a street car, not a race car. I forgot about this. It's a fabricated A-body width Dana 60. Yeah. This is gonna be an awesome build. This car is gonna do amazing things. But I do wanna make sure that everyone who's following along and considering doing this themselves understands you don't necessarily have to do all of this to make an A-body awesome. I've already made a video or three about that, so I'll keep it short. You can hot rod a crappy 360, make 350 horsepower, and have an absolute party. It's a little bit cheaper than that thing. I'm just saying. But if your dream A-body has like 500 horsepower, five speeds, four-wheel disc brakes, nicely built suspension, follow along because we're going to do all that, and it's going to be awesome. Now I can't dive into that project immediately. There are a couple other things I need to do first. Like finally push that thing out the door and put that 440 in that charger. But in the coming weeks, I'm gonna go ape on this thing. So keep an eye out for video updates on that. I need to clean the floor. In the meantime, this thing will be sitting in the shop making bad smells and ruining all the air, but that's okay. I don't know about you, but I'm very much looking forward to the eventual side-by-side -side matchup between the Dart Sport and the Demon. That'll be really interesting. Hey, thank you very much for watching. And remember, buy man, eat fish, he day. Teach a man, fish, give for a lifetime.
Uh, that shouldn't be that color. I can't possibly be the only one that noticed some similarities to this.